Hey everyone and welcome back. So this is going to be our video where we start implementing the line trace functionality uh, in C++. Um, and I also wanted to give a small comparison in Blueprint. I think this might go over to about two videos, but we'll get the main implementation done today. So what I want to do first of all is um, I've made a few visual changes. So these are just adding some colors and materials. So nothing technical has changed it in the project. I just wanted to make things look a bit more interesting. And the first thing we want to do is because we want to cast a line into the world, I'm going to add in a kind of fake crosshair just so it's going to be clear where we're going to be tracing. So this is going to be a blueprint thing. First of all, we're going to go to the blueprints folder. We're going to create a very simple crosshair, uh, which is just going to be a widget blueprint. So if we go to uh, user interface and widget blueprints, and I'm going to call this one WBP underscore crosshair. Okay, with that done, we can go into this class and this is very simply going to be an image that we can just drag in. I'm going to anchor this in the center. I'm going to give this an alignment of 0.5 and 0.5 and we'll change the size down to something like uh, 5 and 5. We also want to make sure that the position is in the zero on the X and the Y and we can see that's now perfectly in the center of the screen. If we hit compile, we can just go back into the character class quickly we open up the blueprint editor go to the event begin play and we won't need these for now and we can create a widget the widget that we want to create is going to be our crosshair and then we just want to make sure that we add this to the viewport so nice and simple a couple of minutes and we now have a crosshair now that highlights the next issue is that we're going to be tracing from the camera to that point on the screen where the crosshair is which at the moment is always going to be our character because we have the character in the middle of the screen. Um, and I think a nice simple fix for this is I'm just going to go into the camera component or the spring arm in fact. With the spring arm component selected, I'm just going to come in and we're going to add a socket offset. So if we use the socket offset, then uh, the rotation, everything still works perfectly fine. A value of about 200 on the Y axis and let's say 100 on the Z axis should be perfectly fine. And then if we press play, we can see that we're kind of now the camera's beside the player and the crosshair is away from us. So we can now cast into the world and hit things properly. Just a couple of quick changes just to make this a little bit more usable when we implement the logic. And one final thing before we go over to uh, our C++ file is we just want to go to the project settings and we want to go to our input. And under the action mappings, I'm just going to create another action and I'll call this one interact. So line tracing is something that you, you would normally use for things like um, casting forward and finding out if you are near an object that you can pick up. So I'm going to bundle this under an interact function for now, and I'll link this to be the left mouse. So I'll put this under the left mouse button. You can, of course, assign this to something like the E button or uh, whatever you think would work for you. Uh, with that done, that is everything ready. So we can now go and create our input binding. So if you don't already have the C++ class open, we're just going to go back into the character. We can do this from the character base which means you can press this up here and it should open Visual Studio for you. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a new function just down here. So we can put this under the protected section where the previous functions which were related to the input are kept just to keep things kind of in logical orders. And I'll call this one void interact pressed. So this is just going to be the function which is called in the set player input. So if we go over to the other file, and we want to create a new action binding like we've done previously. So again, all of these down here are the axis bindings. So we'll create another one under the previous action bindings. Just remember here that what we want to do is call the name of the action binding we've just created in the engine, which was for me interact. And then the rest is going to be the same as we've done previously. So I'm not going to go in depth here. Uh, we can just finish off creating the arguments. And then remember the last thing we do here is we call directly that function that we've just implemented or created in the header file. And then of course we want to actually implement this. I'm gonna use my shortcut button, uh, which is again, control and period on a keyboard. But just remember, it's very simple to just type this out if you don't have access to this. So that function is now implemented and ready to be called. And what we want to do is when we press this button, we are just, like I said, going to find the character's viewpoint and trace forward into the world. So I'm gonna show the very basic rudimentary version of this of uh, implementing this functionality first of all and I think in the next video I'm going to show you a way to, that we can really tidy this up and make it a lot more user-friendly 
uh, but let's just get this uh, working and implemented to begin with. Okay, so when we're calling a line trace function, it has a number of arguments that it needs to take in. Now the important ones are the hit result or the, um, the F hit result, a start point and an end point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on those first of all. So we're gonna create some new variables. The first one is an F vector. I'm gonna call that lock. So that is our uh, location. We also want a rotation, so that's an F rotator. And again, just shorten that to rot. And then the other thing I said is that we want our hit result, which is an F hit result, and we'll just call this one hit. Okay, so these variables we're gonna use to get our start and end point. So what we want to do is get the player viewpoint, and to do that we call the get controller, and then we want to get the player viewpoint. And the viewpoint takes in two arguments, and what we can pass in here, uh, it wants a vector and a rotator, so the location and the way it's uh, facing. So we have our lock and rot. And this is going to get the variables from the player viewpoint and fill the location and the rotation for us. So we now have those filled. So we can use this and we're going to store the, uh, the actual start point now, which is going to be another F vector. And the start point is going to be the location that we've just filled in from that function. And then we want our end point. Now the way that we're going to set this up is we're going to use our start location and then we want to add a vector value to this and a distance. So that's why we have the rotation. We're going to use the uh, rotation, uh, get that as a vector, and then we're going to multiply this by a value. And this is one of the things we're going to improve later. But like I said, we just want to get this done and working for now. So I'm going to pass in an arbitrary number, and that is just a, a value of 2,000 units to trace forward from our start point. So that's how far we can interact with something. Something is... Uh, less than 2,000 units away from us. So these are pretty much all of the values we need. We need one more thing that the uh, line trace function is going to want to have passed in. So we're going to create something called an F collision query params. And these are just the um, trace parameters. So we just call that trace params. And we don't actually need to fill this with anything. It will come um, with some default values, which are perfectly fine. So we can just create that so it's ready. And then the final thing is we want to call the line trace function and this is done by using the get world again so we'll say get world and then line trace single by channel okay and like i said we have a lot of different options for the arguments that we can pass in here so i just wanted to show this but the first thing it wants is our uh, f hit result which remember we've created above which we have uh, just called hit the next thing it wants is the start location uh, so again we've got our start it then wants the end location and if you're not familiar this is uh, the arguments that it's asking for here so this is what I'm referencing and if this doesn't make full sense this is one of those things that you're going to want to go to the documentation for this functionality and it will give you a breakdown point by point uh, what these are how they work and the way that it that it expects you to point uh, fill them in but alternatively as well you've got this down here so it does give you some brief explanations of what they are so you get a good idea of how to set these up uh, but the next thing we want is our end so we'll pass in end then we're going to want the visibility. Now we haven't created a specific thing. This is uh, an enum, so we can just pass in our ECC underscore visibility. Now I'll show you what this means in a blueprint, so it makes a little bit more sense, but this just means that this will be tracing on the visibility channel. Uh, when it comes to things like collisions, uh, you have things like the camera visibility and things like that. So this is going to be using the visibility channel for the line trace. And then the final thing is we want our trace parameters, uh, which we've just got our trace params. So we don't need to worry about those too much at the moment, uh, but that would allow you to do things like add complex line tracing um, and a lot of different options on what sort of things to ignore and things like that. So like I said, we can just trace everything at the moment just to get this working. Now, if we compile this, this is technically working. But one of the problems with doing this in C++ is it doesn't give you the option to uh, draw the debug version of the line, which in Blueprints is a default option. You can just quickly visualize this. However, in C++, I'm going to show you another step so we can actually visualize something happening. So if we were to go back and press play now, we could press the interact button and it wouldn't actually look as though anything was happening. Okay, so I just wanted to demonstrate this visually at least so we can see here for me the build has been successful. So I'm going to go back over and just run the game quickly and press into the world. And we can see that, like I said, uh, as expected, there's no visual representation. Anything has happened at all. In C++, the way that we can do this is we can use the draw debug. So I'm going to go through that very quickly. And what we want to do, quite simply, is if we get a hit result, 
um, or in fact, no, we want to do this regardless so that we can show um, how far the line trace has gone at least. Um, we're just going to call the function draw debug line. Now to use these, we actually need a, another library to be included. So we're going to go back to the top first of all, and we're going to use the uh, include draw debug helpers. So we just want the draw debug helpers dot h. And then if we go back down to our interact function, we're going to come here and we want to draw debug line. And this is quite simple. We want to, uh, again, it gives you here the overrides that we need. So we want the uh, the world which we can just use get world then similar to our line trace it wants a start point so we have all of this ready so we're going to use start it then wants an end point so again we're going to use end uh, we can give it a color which i'm going to just give um, something kind of random uh, we'll use orange we've got the option here whether the line is persistent which we don't want that means it won't uh, ever go away so we'll just say false and then with that being false, we get the option to give the line trace or the, the draw debug a certain amount of time to stay on the screen so that we can see where it went. So I'm going to give this two seconds. And that is it. So it's quite simple, in fact. Uh, we And I'm just drawing a debug line from exactly the same point to uh, exactly the same end location as our line trace. So if we compile this again, we can go back in and we can now visualize at least where the trace is going. Now, like I said, I'm going to show you the... Uh, comparison to doing this in Blueprint in the next video, as well as some implementations to improve the C++ layout and functionality of this as well. Uh, but this is going to be the simple implementation. So if we go back to the engine, press uh, play, and now when we come in, we can see maybe orange wasn't the best color, but we are indeed getting our line traces. So we can see exactly where it's starting from, which is the camera point, and it's going to 1000 units into the world. There's a few things again which Blueprint has some nice standard implementation for line tracing which C++ doesn't. Uh, so it's another one of those things where depending on the use of it, frequency of it and things like that, I do a lot of my line trace debug testing and stuff definitely in Blueprint uh, and that will become more apparent why next time. But also I'm going to show you ways that we can uh, overcome this in C++ and make our own kind of visual debuggers as well. Because when you're doing things like accurate line tracing for weapons or pickups, uh, there's quite a lot of time that you spend where you actually do want to visualize it and see exactly what's happening. Uh, and this is very rudimentary. Like at the moment, we don't know, for instance, whether it's found this cube because the line is going all the way through. Uh, we don't know whether that's been successful, whether it's returning something, whether it has traced through it, for instance. And this is the kind of thing in the next video we're going to be going into. So the one other thing I said that I wanted to show you is the visibility thing because we've kind of brushed over the ECC underscore visibility. Um, and like I said, all that is if we find any collider, we have these collision presets. And we can see here that we've got different trace channels. So we've got um, our trace responses and the object responses. And under the trace responses, we have visibility and camera. And we've chosen to trace on the visibility track. Simply means that anything which was in the world which is set to ignore visibility tracing, like the player, for instance, it means that that line trace is going to go straight through it. So if you want something to be traced by this line trace function we're calling now, you'd need to have the visibility set to block. Uh, which most of these objects in the world will have by default because they're going to be block all. So it means that we will be able to come in and uh, get the name of the floor or the objects that we're looking at. So that's what that really meant. So I'm going to leave that video here for today. Like I said, some really interesting stuff, I think, in the next video, especially where we're going to make some improvements to this. Uh, but I just wanted to get something working so that we've got the basic implementation of line tracing. As ever, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, though, please do leave a like. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.